Joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have Senior Fellow at the Taiye Institute and Chairman of Asian Narratives, Mr. Einar Tangen, who's joining us from Beijing. Also, we have Senior Fellow at the Chongyang Institute at Renmin University of China, John Ross, who's with us from the British capital. London, let's start off with Mr. Tangen in Beijing. Uh, Mr. Tangen, what do you make of uh, the downgrading of uh, America's credit rating uh, by the uh, Fitch Agency. It's now um, a, uh, a double A plus down from a triple A. Well, I mean, uh, there's the real question is why hasn't it been done before? I mean, if it was not the United States, it would be seen as a um, an elaborate Ponzi scheme. Uh, the U.S. has not lived within its <clears throat> fiscal uh, constraints uh, since 2001 and has, uh, in addition to, uh, you know, deficit spending all those years, it has tripled its uh, deficit, uh, its borrowing uh, since 2009. Uh, what you're seeing here is just a logical consequence of the market looking at the United States and saying there are real questions. Uh, and it's not the first time. Uh, back in 2011, S&P uh, downgraded the U.S. Uh, bonds. Uh, they were two weeks later. They were investigated. Uh, there was another group, Evans, that did it in 2012. They also got investigated. Uh, since that time, there have been others. This is not a surprise. Uh, Fitch had signaled in May that they were putting the U.S. on watch uh, because of the, you know, the, the fact that the U.S. does not have a plan to repay the trillions. Uh, third now. 34 trillion is from my last count, uh, given that just added 1.4 trillion in the first six months um, to their deficit with no plan or even seemingly desire to address it. John Ross, um, does uh, the credit rating downgrade tell the whole story? Well, no, there's, there's two different issues. Um, I've had to deal with practically with credit rating agencies. Um, when I was working in the mayor's office in London because we had to get a credit rating for our various transport projects. I have a pretty jaundiced attitude of them. Uh, I don't actually take their ratings very seriously because um, I think they're judged by political criteria. And uh, I, also the question about them is that they, they, they're ineffectual. I mean, they were, you, all the subprime mortgage bonds were rated as AAA until they all collapsed. And then they were suddenly declared to be junk after the event. So that's a pretty useless way of functioning. Um, there's two ways you can look at it. One is, can the US repay its debts? That, that's the only thing I really think the rating agency should deal with, because um, all the rest is political jiggery pokery. And the, the answer is yes, the US can repay its debts, because it just prints dollars. Now, what the exchange rate that dollar will be is a different thing. Um, so I don't actually, for purely technical reasons, don't act, I don't actually agree with the downgrade. But the second thing is, if you take more generally, what is the state of the U.S. economy? It's um, very bad at the moment. I mean, and it, the most astonishing statistic, which came out in the first quarter of the year, is that the U.S.'s capital consumption is now bigger than its capital creation. That means that we have the paradox that the largest capitalist economy in the world is not creating any new capital. Um, for, for a net investment in the United States, it's entirely dependent upon the inflows of capital from abroad. It's a, the United States has become the world's largest economic parasite. So therefore, the economic uh, situation of the U.S. is very is not good, and it's going to continue to have very slow growth. This is a slightly different issue to the and much more fundamental issue than the technical one of what the rate rating agencies is doing. And staying with you, Mr. Ross, uh, usually when the United States suffers some serious uh, economic problems, uh, it also has some serious ripple effects uh, for, uh, for the global economy as well. Talk to us about those ripple effects. Well, what is happening now, as the U.S. becomes more dependent upon inflows of capital, as I say, in the, there's only three times in the last, uh, since 1929, that the U.S. has been consuming more capital than it created. That is, no creating zero capital in net terms. One was due at the beginning of the Great Depression. The other was the international financial, during the international financial crisis. And the third one was during the first quarter of this year. Now, this has a real ripple effect because it means that the U.S., in order to expand its economy, becomes dependent upon inflows of capital from other abroad. Abroad. That means other countries are sacrificing their own investment because they could use the capital in their own country in order to finance the expansion of the US. That, that's why I say it's a large parasite. 
at the moment what is happening is particularly this is coming out of Europe it's coming to extend out of Japan and the US is doing its customary role that it um, in addition to attacking its enemies it, it normally does in its friends as well and um, as we saw that during World War II when it defeated Nazi Germany and succeeded in doing all sorts of damage to Britain and other uh, allies it's doing the same now it's got them engaged in military adventures in ukraine it's got them uh, keep good supplies of good quality goods from china out of their markets and now it's extracting capital from them so you know it's working over its friends as usual mr tang and same question to you as well talk to us about the ripple effects uh, uh, of um, uh, the u.s's economic problems and how can other countries uh, basically immunize uh, themselves from the troubles uh, that, uh, that the U.S. is facing? Well, you, you see that already. Uh, it's still immature. Um, but at, at this moment, there's a move towards de-dollarization. Uh, China is offering loans in uh, renminbi. You're seeing countries doing direct swaps to the extent that they have trade. Um, but th that will grow. I mean, the BRICS are talking about having a, a, a kind of consortium currency. Um, there are difficulties to that, including how you secure it and the, the, the apparatus that goes into it. But as uh, countries move more and more into digital currencies, I think this will be, in fact, the trend and the dollar will be minimized. This has an effect because you know, there are a lot of countries that have dollar denominated debt. So what the rate is uh, in the United States is very, very important. But we could see a, a weakening in the dollar as people lose faith. And uh, as John points out, uh, they refuse to um, put their money into the United States because they don't see it as either safe or uh, more likely that it is not uh, productive, that they're not getting the kind of returns that they want, that the returns that uh, are more readily available, especially long term, are going to be in the East uh, and uh, ASEAN and uh, China and other places. All right. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Andrew Tangen joining us from Beijing and John Ross joining us from the British capital, London. With that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of the News Review. But stick around. There's plenty more to come here on Press TV.